Hey guys, it's Chris. From staying in bed for a whole year to trying to bring back the dead, here are eight of the weirdest science experiments ever performed. Number eight, a year in bed. Cosmonaut Boris Morkov was an accomplished physicist as well as an astronaut via the STS-106 mission. But one of his biggest contributions to science, well, it's easily the time he got 11 men to stay in bed for a whole year without getting up. That was literally the whole experiment. While many people have said that they would want to stay in bed for a year or longer, few have actually done it, and there's a good reason. The body needs to get up and be active in order to counter things that naturally happen in your body when you don't exercise. But for Morkov, he got these men to not just lay in bed for 370 days, he got them to perform other activities while remaining in the same position, including eating, bathing, and of course, watching TV. Hearing about all of this, you no doubt have questions as to the sanity and logic of this project. But for meaning, you need only to look at Morkov's profession as a cosmonaut. He was actually using the experiment to determine the effects of weightlessness on the body via certain positions. He wanted to see how the body would react to not being overtly active, which is something real-life astronauts battle to this day when they're up in space. If they don't work out regularly, their muscles get weak and their bones get brittle because of weightlessness. So truly, this experiment was meant to help people. And if you're curious, the reward for these 11 men staying in bed for a whole year was a brand new car. Number 7. Project MK Ultra. The idea of mind control is something that's been in the literal minds of various groups and organizations right since technology got advanced enough to at least attempt the endeavor. And many governments have dabbled in this as well, including the CIA, with the infamous experiment known as Project MKUltra. A product of the Cold War, MKUltra had one goal in mind, to create and perfect mind control. It didn't matter whether it was through drugs or other means. The CIA wanted a way to control people, and they weren't afraid to do whatever it took to get the job done, which is what led to many problems for the CIA. The test subjects they had were laced with drugs of all types, including LSD, so that they would have hallucinations. They were also tortured through means of sleep deprivation, sensory deprivation, physical abuse, hypnosis, and all manners of other torture. If you're curious as to who would volunteer for such a project, it wasn't voluntary. The people who were a part of it didn't know they were a part of it. The CIA did shadow games to get US and Canadian citizens to be part of the project. And when this got out, the CIA got in a lot of trouble. The project lasted from 1950 to 1966, which shows why this was done in the first place, as this was during the Cold War, and the CIA hated the Soviet Union. The idea of getting one of the KGB or Soviet spies and then figuring out what they know with just a few simple steps no doubt seemed appealing. Unfortunately for them, they never got close to mind control. And as many hypnotists will tell you, you can't overcome free will. The person who's under will fight back if they're forced to do something they inherently don't want to do. Number 6. Stanford Prison Experiments It's not weird for various schools or universities to go and make their own unique studies or tests to try and test something or prove something. But for Stanford University, they decided to do an experiment with the approval and funding of the US Naval Research in which they would put students and a few volunteers into a prison-like scenario and then test how it would affect them over the course of a couple weeks. The scenario went like this. They were brought to a prison and given roles. Some were prisoners, some were guards, and one person was the warden. And then over the course of time, things would go on like they were in actual prison. Guards would escort prisoners, prisoners would have to obey certain rules or be punished, and the warden would get to make decisions and so on and so forth. While this may seem harmless at first, it quickly devolved into a case of psychological absorption. Meaning the students and volunteers actually played their parts a little too well. The power that the guards and warden had over the prisoners was exerted, and the prisoners fought back, or took abuse because they felt it would be the best way to get through the situation. Not the experiment, the situation. 
The experiment itself didn't even last a full week because after six days, many of the prisoners walked out for they'd just had enough. This event was later made into an award-winning movie, and the experiment is referenced in many psychological textbooks. However, some people actually believe the whole thing was faked in various ways, done in a pattern to help provide results for the scientists, instead of just letting things happen. Whether that's true or not can't really be proven. Number 5. THN 1412 Drug Trial Here's an experiment that was weird not just because of the contents of the trial, but rather the results of it were so horrifying and odd in context that it's been dubbed one of the weirdest things to ever happen in the science of medicine. One of the biggest endeavors is to cure all diseases, and a popular one to study is leukemia a form of cancer that's killed many people over the years. Fast forward to 2007, and a drug trial was done to try and treat the disease. Following protocol, the trials were started with animals, and they had some good results. After a few tests, the animals responded positively to the drug and seemed to be cured of the affliction that was given to them. This test was done on a variety of creatures and following all protocols that the FDA and other organizations had laid down. With everything being above board, the trials were then allowed to move on to human test subjects. To ensure that nothing bad happened to the human test subjects, they were given the drug in a much lower dose. In fact, it was 500 times smaller than what rats were given. But despite the precaution, everything soon went horribly wrong. For whatever reason, the drug, again in doses much smaller than what the animals were given, started to cause organ failure in people, and they died because of it. While there were some faults found in the procedure, not the medicine itself per se, it was still incredibly odd that this reaction was in all six test subjects, and this forced the appropriate authorities to further elaborate their protocols to ensure that tests approved for animals went through more testing before being put into humans. Number 4. Raising the Dead Many people have wondered about what it would take to raise the dead, but for one science prodigy named Robert E. Cornish, he had a fascination for it that he would not let go. He felt that the dead could really be brought back to life, and so he did experiments on recently deceased people to see if he could get them brought back to life. He did this through certain methods. The first of which was the teeter board, which he used to move a person up and down on a seesaw in order to get their blood flowing. Then he would inject them with various things including adrenaline and anticoagulants. At first, his experiments didn't work, so he went from testing on humans to animals, which are theoretically easier to bring back to life. And sure enough, he did get some dogs to return for a few seconds, despite being pronounced dead. However, when he went to get approval to do more human experiments, he was met with many roadblocks, especially when he tried to resurrect a convicted killer after he was put to death. While Cornish failed, there's no doubt there are more people out there who would still love to be open to this happening. Number 3. Elephants on LSD the title may say it all, but I assure you that this was an actual scientific experiment. In fact, it was actually done by two different groups of scientists in two different decades. It all started with Warren Thomas, who was the director of the City Zoo in Oklahoma City. He fired a cartridge syringe containing 297 milligrams of LSD into Tusco, the elephant's rump. With Thomas were two scientific colleagues from the University of Oklahoma School of Medicine, Lewis West and Chester Pierce. Now, what was their goal here? They were trying to determine two things. One, would elephants react to LSD the same way that humans did? And two, would they go into a certain state that elephants go into when aggressive and secrete a unique substance from their heads? And for the record, 297 milligrams of LSD is 3,000 times more than a human usually does when they inject themselves with the substance. So needless to say, when Tusco got shot, he went crazy. And after a few minutes of racing around the pen, he fell to the ground and didn't get up. An hour later, after some attempted revival, he was pronounced dead. But some weren't convinced that the elephant died because of the LSD. So 20 years later, the experiment was performed again. This time though, the LSD was given to a pair of elephants via water instead of a dart. The elephants did act loopy, but they were fine eventually. Given the different parameters of the experiments, it's still unclear what caused the death of Tusco. Number 2. The Head of a Dog Dr. Sergei S. Briyuhonenko had an idea. 
He believed you could remove the head of a dog and then use a heart-lung machine to keep the canine alive. A very grisly experiment, and one that you might think would be met with immediate failure. However, it turns out he was right. And once he did this a few times, he made a video on the procedure and sent it out. By the time it made its way to the United States, people were a little more than miffed, as the ethical treatment of animals was brought into question. However, it should be noted that he wasn't mad. He was actually a very brilliant scientist, and actually developed the open-heart surgeries in Russia. It's just that this experiment pushed things more than a little too far. Number 1. Making Sense Out of Nothing at All there are many ways that the human mind can be fooled or tricked into believing one thing is happening when another is clearly present. During a conference in California, a group of actual scientists and researchers were put into a room and told that they would be having a conference on mathematical game theory as applied to physical education, and they would be taught by Myron L. Fox, who was an authority on the subject. But instead, they were actually being taught by an actor who had no idea about anything on the subject. So the question was, would the people just believe whatever he said as long as he said it in a confident manner? And the answer was yes, because though impersonator Myron L. Fox was just spewing out random things, the audience was very intrigued about the discussion and even praised him for his breakdown, showing that anyone could be fooled some of the time. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these unique science experiments? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.